Welcome to Sports Talk Line Dallas Cowboys Weekly, where we talk sports 24-7, 365. And you know what we're going to do? And you're going to do? Subscribe! That's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to hit the subscribe button. You're going to hit the notify bell. And you're going to get us all the time. Anyway, let's begin this the fast way. Let's dive right into this, man. Let's go offense. What do the Cowboys got to do against the Washington football team win offensively? Not win in an offensive manner, but win on offense. You know, I'm really glad you asked this, Nate. And I think that uh, it's an easy question and easy answer. They've got to show up. Show up? I mean, seriously, they've not shown up so far. They've looked out of sync. They haven't looked like their heads are in the game. The coaches have to get the offense prepared. That's number one. Number two, I don't care what you're thinking about the uh, fumbles, though that's obviously a huge thing, or the wide receivers or the tight end. None of that matters. It's the offensive line. Andy Dalton is not going to get time to find a second receiver if he can't even find the first receiver because he's got guys breathing down his neck. Now, we think we have a Cameron Irving is going to be pulled off injured reserve and put in at left tackle. He will not be at 100%. If he was going to be at 100%, they would have already said they were doing it and would have already pulled him off. They have not. They're going to decide today. But all indications are he's going to get a heck of a lot of work and he will be brought off the uh, IR today. Uh, the next thing they have to do is figure out who's going to be playing right tackle. Are they going to put Brandon Knight back over there? Are they going to leave Steele out there and just let him learn? And then more importantly, are they going to help their tackles out? You and I talked about this in the green room, man. Uh, how many times were the tackles one-on-one -on -one with guys, and it didn't seem to matter what the uh, Arizona team did on defense, they had a guy coming free on the QB. Yeah, absolutely. Their blitz schemes against Arizona, their blitz schemes were always getting a free rusher and the timing it perfectly. So, and Mike McCarthy, this is a frustrating thing you saw with Jason Garrett, as you coined the term McGarrett for McCarthy. It, it's unbelievable that they don't give these guys help. Uh, and it, that, that and blows my mind. Garrett wouldn't do that. that the, the perfect example of that is what happened in Atlanta, right? When absolutely, Garrett went, seven was, sacks. Yeah, I mean, boom. And he just left him out there like, oh, well, you know, he, there's no way he's going to get five. Oh, well, hell, there's no way he's going to get six. Oh, well, hell, there's no, oh, damn, he just got seven. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's the way it is. And you got to attack this Washington secondary. I mean, they have the horses to win one-on-one. -on -one. They just need to protect him. And Andy Dalton's not a guy, what I saw, the difference between him and Dak Prescott, Dak Prescott was able to step up in the pocket and create his own throws. And that's something Andy Dalton is lacking. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that was a question. You wanted to know the difference between Dak Prescott and, and Andy Dalton. One is a starter. The other is not. Yeah, one's, one's injured. The other's not. Okay, that's, yeah. Okay, there's two differences then. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so you lied again. And then oh. again, you, with your green screen in the background, you're holding up two fingers. You look like you're in water world and have web, web I almost said web feet, webbed hands. So you're, this is kind of a one. I'm in Long Beach. That's close enough. Absolutely. Water world, baby. All right. And the, the other thing Andy Dalton was doing is he was locking in on one receiver. He would be locked in, and usually it was Cooper or um, C.D. Lamb, and he'd have Gallup running free, you know, up the right-hand side, five yards, five yards out in front of his guy with his arm up, and he would throw it into double coverage over on the left, you know, just missing an interception. And I I don't think he's uh, Dalton's going to get many interceptions. I, I don't think Dallas Cowboys have to uh, fans have to worry about that. He's not accurate enough to throw many interceptions. <laughs> well, he was quite accurate last week to the other team. There, he got away with several interceptions. Yeah, he that. did. He hit him in the hands. Um, man, they can't stand that. Defenders can't stand it when you hit him in the hands with the ball. Man, you gotta you gotta make him scoop it up off the ground or something, or it's, yeah, it's useless. Yeah, exactly. It's too much work. <laughs> well, anyway. Do you think who do you think is going to have the biggest impact on the game offensively? Zach Martin. Okay. Zach Martin. If yeah, he's either going to be there or he's not, and that's going to be the biggest impact on the game. Period. Uh, and then beyond that, it's going to be the Dallas Cowboys running game, and uh, you know, with with Coach McCarrett, 
he's going to trot Elliot out there and do whatever and act like nothing happened. And I tell you right now, man, I, I long for the days of Jimmy Johnson where he would have known something was going on, all right? I mean, you drop the, you put the ball on the ground once, okay. But you put it on the ground this many times, it's an issue. And I went back and I looked at uh, all of his uh, fumbles, okay? And out of his 20 fumbles that he's had since he's been with the Cowboys, that's right, 20, um, only one was a fumble where you're going, okay, there's nothing he could have done about that. Nothing right. he could have done about that, okay? Every other fumble, every one was a ball security issue where he should have been aware of what was going on. I mean, he lost uh, uh, three of them to peanut punches, all right? Whenever you lose a ball to a, a peanut punch, that's a ball security issue because you never lost a, a ball to a peanut punch when you had two hands on the ball, have you? No, okay. The, uh, the, the other ones are when he's carrying the ball out and back like that, and they get him from behind, and they just take swipes at him. Uh, he's not aware of what's going on around him. He's got to have more ball security. He's got to carry the ball tight and in. He knows what I'm talking about because he says in interviews that is what he's working on. So I'm sure I'm not the only guy thinking this. All right, He knows he's got to bring the ball in here and here, and every fumble, you look at the ones from last week, he, uh, the, from behind, he had it here. The, the other one, he had the ball one arm up here. Boom, he got crunched from two sides, the ball goes up. Um, he does this a lot. This is what he does. He does not keep good ball security in here. He's not keeping that aspect in his head. He seems unable to stay fixated on it. Uh, at this point, I would go and look at Pollard and see what Pollard can do because, as you said, I thought Pollard was better in the passing game. Agree? Yeah, absolutely. And knowing, you know what killed me last week is Zeke was fumbling. After all his fumbles, he carries the ball with two hands while running out of bounds. The exact time he didn't need to put two hands on the ball. That's what I'm saying. It's just like lack of awareness. Instead of like, okay, now's the time to put two hands on the ball. It's like two hands on the ball. Where are you? Dude, I just gave you the ball. Will you chill? Go a step and then put two hands on the ball. You know, it's, it's weird. It's weird. All right. So, Elliot is an issue. He has confidence problems. Uh, Andy Dalton has confidence problems. The whole offense has confidence problems. And it all comes from that offensive line. If the offensive line can't get it together, ain't nothing going to help. Because Andy Dalton is not the kind of QB that can cover up for a bad offensive line. Tony Romo could do it. Dak Prescott sure as hell could do it. Andy Dalton can't do that. So uh, in the offensive phase of the game, I don't see the Cowboys winning against the Washington defense. Yeah, I have to agree. I mean, until I see actual evidence that they're going to put tight ends or, hell, put in a, another tackle. Chase Young, Montez Sweat, who is coming on every game better and better. And, and Chase Young, every game is a game removed from his early season injury. And then you put Ryan Kerrigan in behind him. Just when you think you've got that shit under control, here comes Ryan Kerrigan. And he's that sage, crafty vet who knows just when to bring the cheese. I mean, that's dangerous, man. I could see the Cowboys giving up five to seven sacks this game. Yeah, I have to agree with you. I mean, I actually think Chase Young could actually equal his season total in sacks. Now, they could get away okay. from it. The, uh, the coaching staff could say, you know what, we're – we're not going to allow that. We realize our offensive line cannot hold up. They could change and go to a run-heavy jumbo offense. And against this team, I think that works. You do that, you throw in the occasional play action, you move the ball down the field, you punt, and you let your defense, and let's move over to that right now, the defensive phase of the game. This is one I think the Cowboys can win. I think the Cowboys' defense can win against the Washington offense because of the shitty offensive line. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because we're getting Randy Gregory back this week, and it, I'm really interested to see how they're going to use him because they've been using their outside pass rushers a lot of times in a two-point stance. They've been mixing it up with three-point stances as well. Randy Gregory has not played in a two-point stance since he was in college. So it was going to be, it's going to be interesting and to that see. That was a long time ago. That was, that yeah. was quite a few blunts ago. Yeah. <laughs> but. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. 
I shot the sheriff. <laughs> I had to throw she that in. All right. Where mean? else can you find that? But on Sports Talk Line, where we talk sports and blunts 24 7, 365. Yeah, what, what, what right. was that, man? And, no. and by the way, if you haven't yet, uh, please hit that subscribe button down below. Hit that notify bell. Give us a retweet on Twitter. Uh, slap us up on Facebook. Put us on TikTok. Send us to the moon. I'm done. Thank you. Send us money. Uh, oh, yeah. There you go. We like that. Yeah, we do have Patreon links down below. Um, so. The defense, man. I think Randy Gregory is going to hes going to inject a lot of energy into this defense. This kid's got to be just chomping at the bit ready to play, and he's going to bring it on. Now, are they going to play him out of position? Are they going to play him where he's not comfortable? Of course they are. These coaches aren't very <laughs> good. I don't like these coaches. I don't like this defensive scheme. I think it's a mistake to try and throw all these changes at a team with no offseason. I realize as a coach, that's what you like to coach. But your job as a coach is to put the best thing on the field you can, the best product on the field that you can. And when you're demanding players play your game instead of you playing your player's game, you are not a very good coach. There's Bill Belichick and there's the rest of the NFL. And that's why these guys are stuck in this position. They are one-dimensional coaches. And that is the biggest thing they've got to come overcome. I think they can get away with it this game because the Cowboys' defense does have a lot of talent. I think they can get after the QB. I think they can get in his grill. I think they can create turnovers, and that, I think, is going to be huge for the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, well, that's where, the, where you and I are going to have to differ. I don't see them getting any turnovers this game. I mean, it's just it's happened twice all season. I'm not so sure they could be able to create turnovers. I think a matchup, uh, the football team, it feels so goddamn weird to say that, doesn't it? And they're going to go into next season with the same name, apparently. But I digress. I think a matchup they could, uh, they're they going to focus on is going to be Trayvon Diggs on McLaurin. I think that's a matchup where if he gets a if he takes a bad angle, he has the wheels to take it to the house almost at any time. I could see a play where they get a – a quick slant for five yards, a missed tackle happens, and he takes it to the house. I have my eye. That's what I fear most about this Washington offense. Yeah, uh, also their running back, you know, he's not Adrian Peterson, <clears throat> but um, you know, he's got some talent, okay? So they, they've got to watch that, but I think the Cowboys have the horses uh, to take care of the Washington running game. Yeah, you're right. That just really is weird. <laughs> <laughs> But, but times, they are changing. And the passing game, Washington can throw over the top. They can get it up over the top. So that's something uh, Dallas is going to have to be aware of. It's not going to be easy for the Dallas Cowboys defense. Why? Because they're not that good right now. But they do have the talent. They just don't understand the scheme. The more you play the scheme, the better you get at the scheme. So this is another week, you know, in the drill, in the hole, hopefully, you know. But ultimately, and now here's my biggest problem. Mike Nolan, historically, he runs middle-of-the-road defenses. His defenses finish 15, 16, 17. That's where they finish. He's not going to all of a sudden, the players are going to go like, Oh, crap, I get the Mike Nolan defense. Oh, my goodness. Now sack, sack, interception, fumble recovery, tackle for loss. Now I get No, 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 no. He's 15, 16, 17. That's his defense. The defense is not going to be better than it was under Garrett. All right, And, and not under Garrett, but more specifically. Marinelli. Yeah, running under Marinelli. And... These are Marinelli's guys, so when Nolan tries to enact his defense, he doesn't have his guys. Is it going to work out very well? No. Yeah, that's exactly it. They need to generate a pass rush. Well, the good thing is Washington, there we go, awkward, awkward dilemma again. Uh, Washington has been riddled with poor quarterback play all year. So it's going to be – it's going to be interesting. The Cowboys defense have has a way of having subpar quarterbacks go off against them, a la Mitchell Trubisky last year and and others. So, All right. There's, there's one other thing that the Cowboys are going to have to do, a key to the game. Referees are going to have to give the Cowboys a freaking break. They're going to have to call pass interference 
when uh, when Kirkpatrick takes Gallup, throws him to the ground at the top of his route, more than 10 yards down the field, and then turns and makes the interception, and there's no flag. How can you not throw a flag on that play? I don't know. And then turn around on the other side and throw a flag, a ticky-tack flag, on a uh, and give the ball to the uh, Cardinals on the one. And I still don't understand that that flag that they threw to give them on the one on Dix. I mean, that, that was just a BS call. Uh, the officiating for or against the Dallas Cowboys, as you were, has been atrocious this season. I mean atrocious. And it, it needs to level off. I'm not asking for them to make a bunch of calls our way. I'm just asking for them to stop making the calls against us. Yeah, I'm, I'm asking for at least some consistency. That's something oh, they're that being consistent. Yeah, consistently bad. Yeah, it, that is what they're being, consistently bad. And I do not understand that. All right, the last phase of the game is the special teams. I think that the Dallas Cowboys are going to win the defensive phase of the game. I think they're going to lose the offensive phase of the game. They're the special teams phase of the game. Oh, this is where... The Cowboys, man, you know, they bought in the special teams coach who is, he is the guy. He has the credentials, all right? I, I don't argue. He's not like Mike Nolan. This guy had awesome special teams. They made roster decisions designed for special teams. They let a guy go with higher upside at wide receiver and got this guy from another team because he was an excellent special teams player. They have made special teams adjustments. Man, and then they've made bonehead plays. They brought the ball out of the end zone when they shouldn't have brought the ball out of the end zone. They've... Uh, <laughs> they, yeah, they, consistently, they, yeah. It, you pray for a touchback every time they return a kick because, you know, you're not going to advance it past the 25. Not a chance. Cindy Lamb has not yet been able to make a play on a punt return. Nope. So it's it's really been the highlight of the year on special teams was the watermelon onside kick. I mean, that was incredible. I mean, I love that. And I got so excited about that game and everything about it. But you and I talked at that game like, all right, this is one game and this is weird. I mean, it's exciting. I did, and it was great for McGarrett. But, uh, I mean, it, that's just the way it is. And that's where he is. I mean, I don't see where this guy has any excuses and I don't see where Jerry Jones has any excuses. This is all on Jerry. He is just recreating his same thing over. This is like that person, that, that, that girl who dates that guy who beats her up all the time and gets a new boyfriend. And what does he do? Beats her up all the time and gets another boyfriend. And what's he do? Beats her up. This is a Cowboys, a Dallas Cowboys fan. You're just going back to Jerry over and over and over. You're going back to the same boyfriend over and over. And he's abusing you, and you go, it's okay, it's okay. He loves me. And then you're letting him do it again. Uh, you know, it's, it's bad. It's bad what we let Jerry Jones get away with. They need to fire their front office. And by that, I mean anybody with the name Jones. I agree. All of them. I actually got a little something. To, if you want to stay tuned to No Remorse Sports, I got something about this subject coming up in the next week. So, anyway, let's go back to the special teams. We, I think we basically have covered it, that they have yet to not make a play. And what, what would expect you to be any different this week? They didn't even make a play in Atlanta. That was Atlanta not making a play, not Dallas making a play. Atlanta sat there and watched that ball go six yards when they could have dropped on it. That was a freak. That should not have happened. So it really wasn't Dallas making uh, – well, yeah, it was. Yeah, they did. Dallas made the play, but it's so frustrating. And this special teams is so frustrating because they keep making bonehead plays on special teams. It scares me whenever they come out to punt. It scares me whenever they line up to return a punt. I do not like – Special teams plays right now for the Dallas Cowboys. Didn't used to be that way, man. It used to be, I mean, for years and years, it was exciting for Dallas Cowboys special teams. You had, you know, the shark on kickoffs, man. He oh, would yeah, take yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, the shark would get it going and everything. And then, and then, you know, even in later years, you had Harris, who was like, man, he was everything. He brought back kicks. He brought back punts. He was the gutter on punts. He was the gun, gutter on punts. predator. Kicks. 
Oh, man, the guy was incredible. Where are these guys? I had high hopes for C.D. Lamb. Not been happening. And I'm not complaining because C.D. Lamb's been showing up. So, But special teams is an issue. And that's why I picked Dallas to lose the special teams. And that's why I actually picked Dallas to lose this game. Ooh, so you and I are in an agreement here. Yeah, I have yet to see the... I have no belief in this team that they could change the field position, radically change the field position to make this easier on Andy Dalton. They need some short fields, and they, you know, if if now can the Cowboys win? Absolutely. Uh, if uh, let's say Zach comes back and whatever, and uh, and they line up and they they come out with a, a, a game plan to negate this pass rush that's going to come, like run the ball all the freaking time, then yeah, I think they got a chance. But unless they do that, and I've never seen McGarrett do anything like that. All McGarrett's ever really done is line up really good players, give them the ball, and then bitch about it when they don't do exactly what he says. Okay, that's it. McGarrett sounds like something you find on the uh, dollar menu at McDonald's. He, All the McGarrett for one, and, and that's exactly what they do with free agents. They go to the dollar menu. And, and that's I, what I, they I did here, once man. Again. I mean, the guy was not coaching in the league for a reason. Yeah, and you had the arguably the best quarterback, um, and it's diff- It's interesting because he was supposed to bring a level of toughness to the team that hasn't shown up, and so far it's been a mutiny. Oh man! And again, Mike Nolan. Anyhow, that is what it is. What it is. We got to end this puppy up. Uh, we got to do our call to action, which is please hit that subscribe, please hit that notify, please give us the love. We need you, man. Without you, this doesn't happen. And then. What do we do when we always sign up, man? When we sign up, you subscribe first, and then you listen like you play with intensity. Go Cowboys.